All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Gates Air Connect Virtual Events Webinar Series. Today's webinar, Interplex IP Audio Contribution and Distribution Capabilities, is presented to you by Gates Air's VP and General Manager for the Interplex Products Group, Kayur Parikh, with Interplex Broadcast Sales Manager Tony Gervasi and also Interplex Sales Director Steve Paulson. Um, we're into week two of a monumental series of webinars and online events here that we're going to host over the next couple of months at least, um, and I think you're gonna like what you see and hear. But before we begin this presentation, let's take a quick three minute break so we can allow everybody who registered a chance to join in. So please sit back, relax, and we will see you in three. All right, welcome back everyone to the Gatesayer Connect Virtual Events webinar series. This is Keith Adams, Global Marketing Communications Manager for Gatesayer, and we really appreciate you tuning in today. If it weren't for shelter and home quarantine orders, many of you here on this stream would be planning to head to Las Vegas this weekend for the NAB show. Of course, it's cancellation certainly put an end to those plans a little over a month ago. So in its stead, we here at Gates Air are producing quite a bit of streaming interactive content for you to see over the next few months with these virtual events. And in today's webinar, Interplex IP audio contribution and distribution capabilities, or simply stated Interplex products, um, we have the VP and general manager of Gates Air's Interplex product group, Kayo Parikh, who will tell us all about the updated and expanded product portfolio of the industry's most reliable, most flexible, and most scalable content transport platform available. He'll be joined by Interplex broadcast sales manager, Tony Gervasi, and Interplex sales director, Steve Paulson, might also show up as a special guest. So, um, We'll have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation, and we encourage you to type in any questions you might have uh, in the Microsoft Teams Q&A panel. And I'm going to uh, set a question here. Actually, I think there is already a, a question, so that's pretty nice. Um, 
we have good morning from Esteban, who is one of our channel partners um, in South America. And so, hola, mi amigo. Um, let's see. So put on those questions at a first come, uh, anytime you want, because we're going to answer them in a first come, first serve manner. So um, without further ado, let's kind of get started here with the webinar. Um, please welcome Mr. Kayor Parikh. Kayor, uh, I guess you're still muted. Well, good morning, Keith. Uh, thank you uh, for the introduction. Uh, welcome everyone uh, for uh, to the webinar. Uh, thank you for joining. You know, first of all, I like to wish everyone and the loved ones, uh, uh, you know, safe and healthy passage of time in this uh, interesting uh, times that we live in. Uh, so this is uh, the first uh, of the series of Interplex uh, webinar that we are planning. Uh, in today's webinar, uh, we will be going over the different uh, products that we have in our portfolio. Uh, we'll go over the capabilities of those uh, products as well as what's coming up uh, later on this year, what products we are introducing uh, uh, later on this year. Uh, next week uh, uh, webinar, we'll be actually talking about deployment use cases. We'll be uh, showing you how uh, some of these capabilities are actually being deployed and used by our customers. So let's begin. So I'd like to start off uh, you know, with this uh, slide. This is a summary slide of all the products that we are shipping at the, at the moment uh, for broadcast application. We'll start off with uh, uh, the IP link uh, family of Codex, which is on the left side here. Uh, this is our flagship product uh, right now uh, introduced in 2013. We have five models now uh, providing single and uh, dual channels of uh, audio as well as FM composite. Uh, uh, signal encoding and, and transport over, over IP. Uh, these are hardware based uh, products uh, uh, with a lot of integrated capabilities in software, DSP and FPGA for various uh, radio broadcast application, including a lot of IP networking uh, features that we will talk about and how they are used, uh, which is absolutely important you know, for broadcast application and the customers that are looking to move away from uh, the traditional TDM you know, to IP world. Uh, then we have Ascent. This is our latest uh, uh, product uh, in, uh, in in introduction. Uh, we introduced this uh, last year. is based on uh, the IP Link uh, software technology. It supports up to 16 channels of uh, audio over IP uh, capability, full duplex, uh, and it's uh, it's built on uh, CART's platform, commercial off-the-shelf server uh, platform for computational uh, scalability. Now, Interplex IP Connect is a half rack uh, purpose built hardware that's also derived from the IP link uh, technology. It provides reliable IP gateway for externally generated IP streams. Essentially, IP Connect uh, is, uh, is an abstraction of all the networking capabilities that we have in the IP link Kodak family so that it allows for any IP streams uh, to be uh, reliably transported. Now, IP Connect is also a software feature uh, in all of the IP codec models uh, that we are selling right now. Uh, Interplex Live Look is our PC based uh, network uh, monitoring and performance uh, tracking uh, software that works with all of our IP, IP codecs. Uh, it, uh, uh, it provides real time email alerts uh, on any type of abnormalities that it sees in the network or the streams. It can log uh, data for you so you can trend uh, how your network has been performing over time to see whether your ISP has been uh, fulfilling the SLA portions. So it provides a lot of uh, capability. It works very non-intrusively uh, to the traffic, uh, so it doesn't impact the traffic uh, at all. Uh, and we continue uh, to uh, sell and support our legacy multiplexers, T1E1 and IP multiplexer. We have uh, a large install base of the TDM multiplexer, not only in, in, in the US, but uh, frankly all over the world. And if you are one of those customers that are still using E1 and T1 multiplexer and looking uh, to migrate to IP, you know, we have several options. You know, one of the options is uh, to simply replace your T1 and E1 network card with the IP card uh, and nothing else changes in the chassis. All the, um, all the connections uh, remain the same. Uh, you continue to use the same audio cards. A lot of our customers are also, uh, you know, opting to move to IP Link or Ascend Best products uh, because it provides them a lot more flexibility in audio encoding algorithms as well as uh, more 
uh, network reliability uh, with those products. Uh, now we have also seen uh, some customers opt for using just the network card replacement and then put IP connect in front of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the IP multiplexer to get the same level of reliability. So there are several options on how to migrate and we can, uh, you know, we can uh, guide you in, in what's the most effective way or cost efficient way and effective way, you know, f uh, to future proof. Uh, so just go ahead and reach out uh, to your regional, uh, regional sales um, uh, person and, and they will, uh, you know, they'll, they'll contact, uh, you know, local uh, solution expert. And for our uh, US, Canadian and Brazilian uh, customers, you know, we have uh, HD Link, which is our digital uh, microwave STL uh, product uh, with five watts of uh, uh, integrated power. Uh, it has redundant uh, path, so it has both uh, microwave path as well as a redundant IP path that the content can be sent over. It has LDPC channel coding, so it provides about 3 dB of uh, better receiver sensitivity than Reed Solomon. And the product's been um, you know out since 2009, so it's a very mature uh, product. And we'll we'll look at each of this product in in more details in the upcoming slides. So we'll start off with the IP Link uh, Kodak family. So this slide shows uh, four of our five models. This is what we call the audio models. Uh, the first two uh, models in the picture here, uh, IP Link 100 and 100P, they provide you know single channel uh, full duplex uh, sampling rates from 16 to 48 kilohertz for discrete left and right audio, uh, uh, and also uh, 192 kilohertz for AES 192 or digital MPX. Um, IP Link uh, uh, 100P adds a front panel uh, display as well as uh, detailed audio meters, uh, as you can see, and also adds GPS uh, timing capability for uh, for our synchrocast or single frequency network uh, application. In fact, all five of our models uh, uh, provide the GPS timing cap. All, all four of the five models provide the GPS timing capability for synchrocast, except for the 100, which provides uh, you know which is our the lowest lowest cost option. Um, the one of the things that I, I I wanted to mention was that the full duplex nature of the, this uh, codex is completely independent. So you could be sending a composite signal in one uh, in one direction and receiving a compressed or an uncompressed discrete audio in the other direction. So it's a separate encoder decoder. Uh, within within the box. Now the IP Link 200 series, uh, you know, provide the same level of capabilities uh, as IP Link 100P, except it adds another independent full duplex uh, stereo channel. So essentially, you can think of it as having two separate encoders and two separate decoders in a single rack unit. IP Link 200A replaces the second channel uh, with AES67 uh, Ethernet port. Uh, uh, rest of the other capabilities are exactly the same. So with that AES67 capability. It also adds PTP, native PTP support, so you can output a PTP timed AES67 uh, stream. Now all of our uh, four models support receiving AES67 uh, input streams as a source, you know, as opposed to AES3 or, or analog. So on the studio side, you could receive AES67. Uh, only uh, IP Link 200A supports uh, the output of AES67. Now, uh, as far as the DSP, uh, uh, encoding goes, uh, all the four models support the same exact uh, algorithms uh, which can be configured uh, per stream. Looking at uh, the connectors uh, for the IP Link uh, uh, 200, which uh, would provide a superset you know, of, of the information for the other models, all of, all of our uh, Kodak models uh, on the front have an audio monitoring jack as well as a debug Ethernet port. The debug Ethernet port can be used uh, for local management, or you can, uh, you know, use it as a sniffer port. Uh, you know, you can mirror that port to any of the three network interfaces that are on the back, so you can wire sharp traffic uh, if you have to for any diagnostic purpose. Looking at uh, the connectors uh, on on the back, uh, starting from the right side, all the six XLR connectors are our channel one input and output, both analog as well as digital uh, connectors. Uh, on the input, uh, the system uh, can uh, automatically or manually switch between uh, digital or analog, so you can actually connect to different audio sources uh, to the device, and the device has the ability to automatically switch depending on the availability of, of, of digital uh, signal or not. On the output, the content is presented uh, on both analog and digital simultaneously. Now to the left of the XLR connectors are your channel 2 connectors uh, for the IP Link 200. 
Uh, these are the studio hub connectors, uh, same exact capability, analog, digital, both input and output. Uh, to the left are the three Ethernet ports, uh, even though they are uh, uh, they are labeled management uh, WAN 1 and WAN 2, uh, they provide the same exact uh, functionality. In other words, you can stream out of all three of them simultaneously, and you can control or manage uh, the box out of all three of them uh, simultaneously. The USB port uh, on, on the back is used uh, to store audio audio files, your playlist uh, as a backup source, or you can use that to uh, also uh, uh, software upgrade or, or configuration backup restore. So there are many use cases uh, for, for the USB port there. Uh, to the left is the high density connector for eight uh, input and output GPIOs, uh, truly multifunctional. You can transport them, you can tie uh, the contact closures to alarm IDs. You can control some aspects of the box. For example, you can turn a stream on or off, mute a channel, etc. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, four, four of our five models have the capability of uh, uh, GPS uh, time synchronization for Synchrocast. We also have an option of having a GPS receiver populated in, in, uh, in the unit. And if you do have a GPS receiver populated, this is where the GPS uh, antenna would go to, go, go to connect to. Uh, two serial ports, uh, one for each channel for IPLink 200. The two B and C connectors are the 10 megahertz and one PPS. So in case you have an external GPS, this is where you would input uh, those uh, signals uh, for synchronization required for Synchrocast uh, and SFN application. If you have an internal GPS receiver, this then becomes output. So you can connect uh, those signals to additional units such as Flexiva or other IP links. And we support uh, redundant power supply. We support uh, uh, AC obviously, and then on the DC front, we support both wall volt, 12 volts wall volt, as well as optional uh, negative 48 volts uh, DC. Uh, the fifth model, uh, IPLink MPXP. Now this was introduced uh, in 2016. Uh, it's purpose built for uh, uh, FM composite uh, transport. Uh, it is a single channel full duplex, and it supports both FM composite sampling rates as well as uh, a linear and compressed 32 and 48 kilohertz. So you can configure uh, each side, you know, transmit or receive side uh, for 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 those sample rates uh, because it's full duplex uh, is completely independent. So you could be sending a composite signal in one direction, bringing back for monitoring. You can bring back a linear and compressed at 32 or 48 kilohertz. It is dual domain, so it supports both analog as well as digital MPX. It supports AES-192 as well as analog. Uh, and uh, and it supports uh, simultaneously. So you can connect uh, on the audio processing side, you can connect using AES-192 and you can output analog signal at exciter or vice versa. You can go digital to digital, analog to analog, or you can mix them. Uh, and it's built on the IP-Link platform. Uh, so it's the same exact um, uh, look and feel of the web, same networking features, uh, reliability features, etc. So looking at the connectors uh, of, the, of the MPXP on the back, uh, these two XLR connectors are are, are used for AES-192 input and output, and this is where also if you were to configure either side uh, as uncompressed uh, audio, this is where we would have the audio input and output. So we support AES-3 for linear audio. Uh, to the left of that is the, M the two MPX uh, signal ports uh, for, for redundancy, so we support failover. Uh, of the audio processor. Uh, to the left of that are the two MPX output port, which are active simultaneously. In fact, both the analog MPX output port and the AES output uh, are active simultaneously. We also have two uh, subcarrier uh, ports uh, for mixing, so you can uh, mix in a local RDS signal if you wanted to or an, any of the SCA signals, which would be available uh, after the mixing on the local MPX output. And then the left of, and the rest of the connectors on the left here are exactly the same uh, as the other IP-Link model that uh, that we saw. So this uh, slide shows uh, uh, connections uh, for the MPXP. You know, as you can see on the on the input side, you you can optionally con, uh, connect uh, you know main and redundant audio processor. You know, main can be uh, digital AES-192. The backup can be analog, or both can be analog, and the system can automatically or manually fail over between between them. Uh, and again, on the transport side, because the full duplex nature is completely independent, you can be sending uh, composite signal uh, in one direction and and bringing back either linear. 
uh, signal for monitoring, or you can also bring back composite signal. And on the output, all three ports are are active to a, to MPX, uh, analog MPX, and AES192 are all active at the same time, so you can connect to multiple exciters, and then we have the two uh, subcarrier mixing. So one of the key uh, features uh, that differentiates uh, our MPX uh, uh, Kodak uh, is the minimum bandwidth requirement uh, for for sending uncompressed uh, MPX. Uh, it's 1.64 megabits per second, and this is lowest among uh, any vendor uh, that supports uh, this uh, this capability. Since we we support um, you know MPX capability you know in all uh, five of our models you know the four audio models that I talked about and the MPX you know I wanted to kind of summarize on 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 the different. Uh, um, advantages or, or capabilities uh, in in each um, each family. So on the for the uh, you know for the for the audio model, it only supports digital MPX. It doesn't support analog, right? So if you need analog support e anywhere, whether on the audio processing side or on the exciter, you have to select MPXP. Uh, the minimum bandwidth required to transport MPX uh, P, you know, in, in for the audio model is 3.2 megabits per second. Uh, while you know for the MPXP, you know we have done additional um, uh, work uh, the, to minimize it down to 1.64 megabits per second. So you know if bandwidth is a concern, obviously you know MPXP is is going to give you uh, a better option. Um, you know one of the advantages uh, you know that that uh, the audio model has is. Uh, the option of return audio, right? So on the return audio, you can bring back compressed streams, so you don't need a lot of bandwidth. You can bring back, for example, 128 kilobits opus or AAC stream. While with MPXP, the return, if you want to bring back return discrete audio, it has to be uncompressed. So minimum need 1.1 megabits per second. Uh, that's with the overhead uh, to bring back a 32 kilohertz uh, linear stream. And uh, one of the other reasons oh, yeah, why this doesn't work, I can hear both audios. Excuse me. Sorry, we're having technical difficulties. Steve just joined. So you do have special guest Steve Paulson on. Sorry about that, Kier. OK. Uh, so one of the other advantages that I uh, I see uh, that the users select uh, the IPL uh, 200 uh, for is um, uh, for MPX uh, application is uh, is is the fact that it has uh, you know two channel capabilities. So if you need to transport two independent MPX stream, you know obviously the 200 will provide you a better cost effective uh, solution. But you know as as far as you know MPXP advantages goes, you know it provides the redundancy on the input and output port, uh, and you know it allows the local RDX mixing. So there are advantages and you know on on both sides. So depending on your use case uh, situation, you can. You know, you can talk to our specialist to figure out what is your best, what is the best model, uh, you know, for for you. All right, so uh, this uh, slide basically uh, summarizes the main features of uh, of the IP Link family, and it applies, you know, to all all the five, um, you know, models. These are what we call uh, capabilities that differentiates us. And 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 first, you know, the first uh, of of that capability is the network. Uh, uh, reliability and security, right? This is the area where we have spent a lot of time in R&D. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we recognized very early on uh, that impairments in the IP network and security concerns will be challenging uh, to broadcast customers. I mean, the application for voice over IP where the IP was first used is a little different than uh, for broadcast where the streams have to be on 24/7, so reliability was was going to be paramount. We also recognize not everyone is going to have a dark fiber connecting studio to studio or studio to transmitter link. You know they would uh, utilize public internet either as their main or, or or as a backup. So you know all of these factors went into our design of the Kodak even back in 2013, which is why we introduced our 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 product with three network ports. We were the first uh, vendor to do so back in 2013. Uh, we do have a couple of vendors now that have uh, f uh, followed us, but what really makes our technology special is how those ports are used, right? Our stream splicing technology, you know, with the combination of FEC, you know, provides hitless protection, uh, hitless protection. Uh, on top of that, at the decoder, uh, we have uh, what we call source switching, right? So it can automatically uh, fail over between uh, you know, primary group of streams or secondary group of streams or backup group of streams. So we have this multi-level reliability that, you know, that's uh, built in uh, to the to the platform. Each of our ports also have built in strict uh, packet filtering rules 
uh, to provide uh, protection against uh, intrusion, and we, we and we just don't protect audio, right? Every every signal that we generate, um, you know, GPIO, uh, RS232, including uh, now with IP Connect, uh, external IP packets, you know, is protected by our stream splicing technology. Now, talking about IP Connect, IP Connect, uh, you know, I I consider that as one of our uh, unique differentiators. Uh, you know, no other vendor has uh, the level of capability that we have. It leverages all of all of the capabilities we talked about to provide the same reliability for externally generated streams such as E2X here in the US and in the Europe. You know we are working with vendors uh, to uh, protect EDI uh, streams as well. Uh, single uh, you know frequency network uh, you know capability that we have is Synchrocast is our patented technology. We have five patents uh, on this uh, you know on the technology. Uh, it's a proven technology. We you know we have been deploying this for two decades now. Uh, not just in radio broadcasts, uh, but but also in the public uh, safety world. So this year we've introduced a cost effective variant of uh, Synchrocast called Content uh, Sync Network is essentially a Synchrocast light capability. Uh, it allows the audio delay uh, you know, to be maintained within one milliseconds as opposed to full flash Synchrocast uh, you know, feature which maintains the delay within one microsecond, which is absolutely uh, needed for single frequency operation. Now the content sync is targeted for applications that use multi frequency FM and use RDS uh, for switching uh, FM channels. So it keeps the audio in sync as the uh, the receiver uh, in your car switches from one FM frequency uh, to another. Now again, you know, Tony will uh, cover uh, the use case of uh, the content sync uh, next week uh, uh, with uh, you know with in the in the webinar. So this slide uh, basically, uh, you know, shows a typical uh, stream splicing uh, topology that we commonly see within our uh, within our customer base. Uh, two of the three network ports uh, are used to connect to the outside vans, you know, for sending uh, the content um, in a hitless manner. Now both those outside ports have strict firewall rules uh, configured uh, the, that that we commonly see within our customer to protect against somebody trying to get in. Uh, to control the box. The third port uh, is connected on on the local LAN for for control. Uh, you know, again, the stream splicing provides hitless protection, not just for audio, but you know, again, for FM MPX signal and and in combination of you know uh, audio as well as uh, other metadata signal. Now, with introduction of uh, IP Connect, uh, we can also now pr provide the same protection for uh, other IP streams. For example. Uh, you know, E2 Xtreme on the on the studio side can be ingested over the LAN port, sent reliably using stream splicing across the wide area network, and on the uh, transmitter side, uh, you know, the the same E2 X packets are delivered uh, to the X gen. Again, it's agnostic, uh, so IP Connect is agnostic of uh, the application it carries, uh, even though the application in the US is primarily E2 X right now, but you can send just about anything because we transport the entire IP packet. So you can even send uh, critical control packets. Uh, you can send EDI packets in uh, in the Euro for, for DAB and DAB plus uh, type type system. So it's completely agnostic, which is what makes it um, a unique uh, uh, feature. So this um, this slide show. So this um, this slide shows uh, the source switching uh, capability that we have uh, in our platform. Uh, so if you have a situation where uh, you have your primary uh, source stream going over your main network and your your secondary your backup stream going over uh, another uh, uh, network uh, backup network. Uh, the decoder has the ability to you know switch uh, uh, completely between the mainstream and and the backup stream should the mainstream fail. Or if you have two different encoders, for example, uh, pointing to the same decoder, one is your main encoder, the other one is a you know backup encoder. Uh, the decoder uh, has that capability, whether either manually switching or automatic switching, and you have complete control of how it switches. And then one of the other backup option is. Uh, uh, local uh, locally fed audio signal, so you can have an off air receiver monitor or some other audio source connected to the input ports of the um, of the uh, of the decoder, or you can have a USB playlist. So if you lose your network completely, uh, you can switch automatically uh, to the uh, uh, to the to the local source. A lot of the use cases we have started to see in the US is uh, you know folks do have the main network, whether that main network is their own fiber connection or or an SLA guaranteed um, you know, ISP based connection, and then they use LTE as a as a backup 
Uh, and so the decoders now have the capability to automatically call up uh, the backup connection or the LTE only when it is needed. So we have added that capability in, in our decoders and, and, and Tony will cover the use cases uh, for that also next week. So some of the other features uh, you know, that I wanted to cover that are that are kind of important uh, in, in the platform uh, that, that we have, you know, our, our, our multi-coding. So the multi-coding uh, essentially provides uh, the same content uh, to be, uh, you know, to be encoded and sent simultaneously to the same uh, or, or 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 different um, uh, destination. You know, the, one of the main use cases of multi-coding is your main backup network. So you can send an uncompressed stream over your main network and over your backup public internet or LTE. You can send a highly compressed, for example, 64 kilobits open stream. You know, uh, and the fact that it's possible out out of the same channel is is. Uh, uh, how uh, multi-coding uh, provides that benefit. Uh, we also support uh, IceCast and Shoutcast transmit and receive streams with automation support for metadata, as well as um, you know loudness and level control uh, you know capability. Uh, one of the uh, new newer feature that we introduced uh, last year was uh, something called Dynamic Initiator. It allows the receiving uh, or, or uh, a codec that I, I shouldn't say receiving. It allows the codec that's uh, behind a NAT uh, to either uh, send or receive uh, to a codec that's uh, that's on a, on a public, um, you know, public uh, uh, public IP address. So one of the use cases that we have had uh, for this is uh, NFL football games where uh, being broadcasted from the stadium to a studio, which uh, site codec, which is on a public IP address. The, the stadium codecs uh, are on a private addresses uh, and they were able to initiate streams from there, receive streams from, um, you know, to and from the codec uh, at the studio. So uh, we have a couple of upcoming products uh, uh, later this year. Uh, one of the products that uh, we will be introducing uh, in the family of IP Link is IP Link 100E. The E stands for Exciter. So this is an audio or IP plugin card. Uh, for our Flexiva line of um, exciters uh, is full duplex, uh, so it supports both input and output. So it not only decodes and presents the audio to the exciter on the back plane, but you can also use uh, the card to send back confidence monitoring stream back to the studio or to the cloud, for example. Uh, it supports all the common audio or IP format, uh, you know, for example, linear, compressed, AES67, so you can feed it AES67 and you will decode it and output to the Flexiva, for example. It has three gigabit Ethernet ports, uh, you know, just like the IPL100. Essentially, what we were trying to do was bring in, um, you know, all the IP Link 100 features, uh, you know, into a plugin card. Uh, supports, uh, you know, stream splicing, primary, secondary backup, as we talked about, including um, uh, playing uh, audio from the USB playlist uh, in case you lose all your connectivity. Uh, one of the new things uh, this card supports is a protocol called SRT or Secure Reliable Transport. Now SRT is 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 becoming really popular for uh, real time video contribution. Uh, we are using SRT uh, for for audio, uh, and you know more and more vendors are starting to adapt that as well. Uh, it provides not only packet retransmission but also it encrypts uh, the the stream uh, in route, so it protects from uh, eavesdroppers. So, uh, the card also has four input and output GPIO. Again, multifunction. You can transport them. You can tie them. Uh, to allow similar capabilities as, as IP link. Instead of eight, we have four uh, GPIO. Another product that uh, will be introduced uh, uh, is uh, IP link 100C. Uh, C is uh, standing for compact. Uh, this is a half rack unit hardware. Again, same capability, full duplex, a, uh, you know, input and output. One of the difference uh, from the plug-in card is that it does support both analog as well as digital options. Uh, and the other difference is that it has an optional mic level uh, input as well. So it's it's meant for you know cost effective portability as well. So both of these products that I talked about would be um, more cost effective than uh, IP Link 100. Now let's look at uh, Ascent. So as I mentioned, Ascent is uh, one of uh, the latest product that we uh, we introduce uh, for. Uh, for high density uh, application. It supports uh, this version right now. Release one supports up to 16 uh, channels of audio in and out. 
uh, it, it's built on the IP link technology. So we started off with all the uh, features that we built on the IP link and software. Uh, you know, so it has the same look and feel. If you are familiar with IP link, uh, the web would look very similar. Uh, it's obviously interoperable with IP link because a lot of our use cases are having a send on one side and then in you know, IP links uh, at the remote side. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, it's built on a CARS platform, uh, Intel based CARS platform. We are offering right now uh, this on a branded server. Uh, which uh, uses an Intel i7 uh, 4 core. Uh, it uses Ubuntu uh, operating system uh, in the in the branded server. We are looking at offering just a software solution um, in uh, in few months uh, so that uh, so customers may be able to load, will be able to load uh, the, the software package on their own uh, server, which we will provide the specs for. Now looking at the uh, the branded server uh, connectors uh, on the on, on the back you see two two PCIe slots. Uh, this is where uh, the two of the eight channel audio cards would connect to. Now we've integrated uh, audio science card, uh, the very high quality cards uh, that are tightly integrated into into our software. Uh, we also have four uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. Um, you know that you can use it any way you would like. Uh, typically, what we see is that one of the port uh, would be used for maybe a 67 input and output. One of them would be used for management, for example, uh, control, uh, and two of those would be used for stream splicing across the wide area network. And if you need additional ports, you can, you know, you know always connect additional USB to Ethernet adapters and get uh, ports because the, the operating system will recognize that as additional network interfaces. So typical uh, deployment uh, for Ascent we've seen so far, uh, you know, studio to studio application, um, you know, we've seen, um, you know, a lot, you know, high density uh, channels being transported across, uh, you know, studio by one of our customers, uh, Sirius XM uh, 8 and 16 channels of AES 67 uh, transported across two different networks for stream splicing. Um, uh, but majority of the use cases that we've seen so far is, uh, you know, having a send at uh, at the head end, uh, either for distribution or contribution, and lots of talking to lots of IP link at the remote site, for either for distribution, uh, you know, sending the streams or or contribution. And again, uh, Tony will cover uh, the use cases next week on how exactly how these are architected uh, and and implemented. So this slide uh, covers the release one uh, specification. Uh, I'm not going to go over all all of the feature list. Uh, release one is out, um, you know, already as as uh, as I mentioned earlier. So on the audio side, as I said, you know, we've integrated um, uh, the audio science cards. They're you know they they work very well for us. Uh, but the software is also designed to work with any Linux USB audio as long as it's ALSA capable. So you could plug in, uh, for example, uh, uh, in a a USB audio into the into into the server and you will be able to create uh, uh, input and output channel. Uh, so we support with the uh, with the audio science. We support AES3 analog. Uh, we also support AES67 input and output. You know for audio IOs. Uh, the sample rates um, we support are 32, 44, and 48. It does not support uh, AES192. Uh, we support two forms of GPIOs, uh, you know, each card, uh, the, the audio science uh, that we use has 16 input and four output, uh, so you can use those for, uh, you know, transport. We also support uh, data probe, uh, so if you don't have um, the need for AES3 analog, you just need AES67 and need GPIO, you know, data probe is, um, is, is, is supported for uh, input and output for GPIO. In fact, if you need additional GPIOs, then what the card supports uh, you know, you can have additional uh, data probes connected to the server. Uh, it supports up to 16 full duplex uh, channels, as I mentioned, in a single uh, one RU uh, server. Uh, all the common codecs uh, that uh, we use are also supported. Uh, we have added AAC XHE for uh, uh, for the ascent, and it also supports multi coding, similar to IP link, so you can have the same content encoded and sent. Uh, you know, to same or different destination uh, in different streams. So on the streaming front, uh, you know, it, it supports RTP streaming, which is uh, what we need uh, to interoperate with IP link. Uh, with RTP streaming, it supports all the different uh, uh, reliability, such as stream splicing, FEC, time diversity, network diversity. All of that is exactly the same as as IP link primary, secondary, backup switchover. But we also support uh, SRT, you know, with uh, with Ascent as well. 
so SRT uh, again, like I said, provides uh, the retransmission and encryption of the of the stream. So if you have uh, currently, uh, you know, assigned to a Santa, uh, you can use SRT as as a mode of transport. Uh, Live look is also uh, supported uh, on on the ascent. Now, as far as uh, you know, number of streams is concerned, we have capped the number of streams uh, uh, based on our testing for release one. Uh, we are looking to increase uh, the, the number significantly higher uh, for for uh, for the upcoming release. So on the platform side, we support both secure web as well as secure SNMP with multiple user accounts. Um, four network ports with access control similar to IP link has firewall built in there. The USB ports are also hardened, so you can't just go in and connect a, a, a mouse or a keyboard and gain access. Uh, so we have hardened uh, the uh, the branded server. So release 1.1 uh, we are targeting, um, you know, is what we are working on targeting for for end of July. You know, one of the capabilities uh, for for the that release is Ascend Media Gateway. So this is a similar uh, to the IP Connect uh, where we can take in an external uh, media stream and provide the reliability in a point to multi point uh, distribution scenario. Uh, the difference is that IP Connect has a bandwidth limitation uh, on on the content it can accept uh, uh, because of the platform uh, with the ascent uh, being on a cards and a scalable platform. We are now able to also uh, provide the similar protection for high bitrate content. So we are currently testing ATSC3, um, you know, streams, uh, you know, distribution across uh, uh, public internet. Uh, our colleague Joe Cecilia is actually going to do a webinar uh, or a NAB paper on that, a virtual NAB paper next week on on how SRT can be used for cloud distribution and and the product that uh, we are currently using to test that is 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 Ascent and and the Ascent Media Gateway is that capability. Uh, we'll also support IceCast streaming uh, and with release 1.1, we are also introducing a new branded server. Uh, this is Ascent Plus. Uh, it will be two rack unit with the redundant hot swappable power supply. Uh, it will also have four PCIe slots in the back so it can support up to 32 stereo channels uh, in full duplex. So this is how we are scaling up uh, on, on the server capability. Uh, that's all I have on Ascend, and I, uh, Tony will uh, uh, will present uh, the HD link uh, uh, section. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is uh, uh, doing well during these times. Um, and thanks for taking the time to join us this morning as we discuss uh, the uh, Interplex products from Gates Air. Uh, as uh, Kayer went through the Ascent and uh, our, our legacy and the IPL products. The HD link has uh, been around now for, so what, about eight years, Kayer, about 10 years right now? Um, yeah, 10 years. 10 years, so, um, but it's uh, it's still uh, a, a proven technology. It works phenomenally. We, we're, 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 we're moving a lot of these bad boys because of the technology that we deployed inside and being able to uh, use it for not only audio, uh, but also be able to use UDP or IP with it. So um, the HD Link 950 goes 932 to 960, so we can use it in uh, uh, Canada, the United States, and uh, and Brazil. Um, it's configurable from 32 to 256 QAM. It has true five watts of power. It's not the theoretical power. It's true five watts of power. And of course, um, you can field address it for your bandwidth configuration, the QAM rate, as well as frequency. Um, there's also uh, an IP mode only, which we'll discuss, so you don't have to use any of the built-in audio cards. We'll pair them with an IP link, so that allows you to move composite as well as EDOX data, uh, RDS, or what have you, from port A to point B. Um, this also has the ability to back itself up through IP, uh, which is very unique to the uh, to any STL product. Gives us the ability then. So if you're running this in and uh, with audio cards, and you're running it as a dual linear or a linear compressed system, um, that gives you ability to transport uh, all the information that the HD link is is uh, sending or you can go ahead and adjust that you maybe only want your main channel and not the secondary to go across IP and the ability to set it so it sets up as it's either running full time with it 
Uh, so the RF and the IP paths are running identical at the same time, or you can have it so if the RF fails, it initiates the IP, and then you can also assign what is the primary source of the output. Is the output going to be IP based or is it going to be RF based? Uh, so you can actually assign that maybe you only want your secondary channel to be IP based primary and then the secondary to be RF. So that gives you the abilities on that. And then of course it has return information that so you can look at, uh, uh, you can see what the return path information is doing. Um, it's, it's not a bi-directional system per se for uh, sending TCP IP, but it's, it gives a, has a return information. So the, tra the, the transmitter, if you log into the web page, you're able to see some of the information that's going on with the receiver. Um, again, using the IP, the Ethernet connection. Um, this gives you the ability to have hitless operation using dynamic stream splicing. When we're pairing it up with our uh, IP audio, we're using the IP connect. Uh, the best part we do is the using the uh, uh, the composite. So having an IPL 100 MX, uh, MP on the far end and the both ends uh, gives you the ability to send in AES-192 or uh, analog composite as well as your RDS and your E2X data if you have your importer exporter like the FMXI 4G at the studio. You take that output, feed it across the RF path, across the 950 path and bring it back out to the transmitter side. At the same time, we can use the, the network, the IP network, whether it's your MPLS circuit or cable modem, doesn't matter, and we can use uh, dynamic stream splicing. So the receive end is receiving both the RF, the information from an RF path through the 950, as well as all the information uh, from an IP path. Uh, and again, we could do that with composite or we can do that in any of the um, uh, in any of the audio modes if you wanted to using the IPL system. We can also use the Ascent, so we can do 16 channels of stereo, albeit at that point it's going to be compressed using Opus or something like that. Um, and then your network, your secondary network, if you don't want to use dynamic stream splicing, because we have the ability to multi-code on the, on the audio systems, on the audio IPLs, this gives us the ability to send maybe linear uncompressed audio across the RF, but again, leverage our bandwidth savings on the secondary path if we're going to use a 4G card or use a slower path that we can just send Opus 190 or Opus uh, at like 64K or what have you. Um, this is a, a, just a quick little snapshot. And we're going to go through this more in depth next week on next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Uh, when we talk about deploying the HDL and the IPLs. But this is a little snapshot of, uh, of using um, AES3 and connecting your studio to your transmitter site uh, with sending not only composite, but as well as your EDOX data, where you can see you have your main processor, your backup uh, for your FM, your HD2 processor, three and four, if you would, all feeding the FMXI 4G. And if you see from the FMXI 4G, we're feeding our EDOX data into the HDL port of the HD link, as well as our AS3 audio. Off it goes through RF and goes out to the other side. Um, and here now we're going to do method two. If we're using AES192 and or I'm sorry, AES3, that gives us the ability to switch. Um, using an IP link, if you see, we have the IP uh, IP link inserted in there. So we have the FMXI 4G feeding the IP link, and this is where we're going to use. You know, if say that's a composite box, an MPX box, uh, I think we have that on the next slide. Uh, that will show uh, we could use IP Connect. So we're now going to embed the E2X data in with the audio, whether it be composite or uh, or MPX into the stream and feed it out the other end. And again, gives us the ability to use a, a public switch IP network to use as a backup if you would like. And here, what we're talking about using uh, using composite. Um, if you're feeding AES-192, the important thing to remember is that you're going to have to generate, if you're not inserting your RDS out the transmitter site, um, you're going to have to generate the RDS through your audio processor, which most high-end audio processors that have the AS192 output have that ability to insert that. But that gives you then the ability to have one AS192 output that's going to feed your FM, uh, the IPL 100 MP. You're also going to feed your E2X data using IP Connect, put everything together, boop, out the door it goes. And again, using the RF network as well as the public switch IP network, now you can see on the far end where we're going to feed the exciter E2X data as well as AS192 data. And that gives us the ability to use a legacy exciter that we don't have an AS192 input. We just have a baseband input. We can take one of the baseband outputs of the MP, uh, 100 MP and feed a legacy exciter.
Yeah, one one other important point is that if you have to implement a single frequency network over 950, uh, this would be the mode to do it because you know we, as you can see that we can time uh, synchronize uh, both the uh, MPs uh, and uh, uh, encoder and decoder using GPS timing capability. So uh, this also allows this more of method of all IP mode also allows SFN uh, applications over 950. Correct. Yeah, this is the preferred method to do the SFN system. Oh, uh, that's it. OK, that's it. So we're going to on uh, next Tuesday uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll, we'll send out another link, I believe, Keith, as well as on social media. I'll be posting it. Uh, I'll be uh, talking to some end users of the IPL and H HDL systems and how we deploy them in different uh, in different markets like Philadelphia uh, here in West Palm Beach, as well as Jacksonville, Florida. So we'll go over those and show you some slides on how we deployed them and the methodology and why we did it, including uh, some uh, some synchronization networks using content synchronization and this is where we're synchronizing the audio on multiple translators so when it switches from when the customer switches or now teslas are switching by themselves at a customer here in west palm beach tell me it did it by itself and he doesn't know how um, but apparently teslas are now having the ability that it can switch based on rds without activating alternative frequency somehow switched from the main uh, from the one translator to another by itself and I heard it and it's doing it consistently it's consistently so I don't know if that's a feature within Tesla or on that radio itself on the and then just in the Tesla radios but this gives you the ability to synchronize multiple translators or multiple frequencies uh, on uh, their content so you don't have stuttering back and forth as you switch um, uh, frequencies and again we'll do that next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Care. All right. Okay, you're still muted. No, well, we'd like to. Muted. Yeah, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. I'm pretty sure Kay will. Okay, he's back. And yeah, um, we have some Q and A's, Keith. We sure do. Um, in fact, before we get into the Q and A part of this, um, let's uh, get some announcements out of the way here. And. Um, First off, that Q&A panel is right there available in Microsoft Teams. So we're going to answer these questions in a first come, first serve. We have a few already available. Um, the the webinar, yeah, let's start speaking English. The webinar's recording will be available at the same link that you use to sign in on here, <clears throat> but it will also be available on gatesair.com in our webinar section and on our YouTube channel later today. And in addition, we add these to our educational video library at gatesairuniversity.com, which is our online hub of lessons and webinars about broadcast engineering. And if you didn't already know, this webinar, like all webinars that we put out, uh, qualifies for one half SBE recertification credit, category I recertification. For more information about that, please visit sbe.org. Now, on to the questions. We have a question from India, from our uh, channel partner in Horizon, Ketan uh, Dutkia asks, is the IP link MPXP uh, able to support 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate? No, the only uh, uh, uncompressed linear audio uh, sampling rates we support uh, at the moment is uh, 32 and 48 kilohertz. OK. Um, we have a question from Anonymous, one of my favorite uh, repeat visitors, uh, Mr. Anonymous or Ms. Anonymous, asks, uh, when using public internet as a backup, is there protection built in providing security to VPN network um, connections with with our products. Yeah, so you know you could uh, obviously configure the access control list on the port that is connected to the public internet, so that you know you can turn off uh, any type of control traffic coming over that, and only allow that specific stream uh, that you intend uh, to send over the public internet, uh, and it can also filter that stream. Uh, from the specific source IP address that uh, you know you are actually sending it from. So there are multiple level of uh, protection that's built in on accepting the stream traffic uh, as well as protecting uh, the box from uh, taking control over the web, for example. Awesome. Plus, plus the ports, if, since there's three ports on here, one of the things that we see a lot of co and customers doing um, 
they'll you can go in as uh, on each particular WAN port and turn off certain features that you're not going to use. So if all you're going to stream, you can turn off the HTTP port, uh, port 80 and all of that good stuff. So it's just receiving streams and use your maybe your management port that may be on your inside network or your engineering network to manage the box. And as Kayer said, there's an access control list for access, and then there's also a control list for allowing a particular IP stream uh, to uh, a particular IP address to come into stream to the box. We have a question from Eduardo Everts. Um, are the HD links only available at that range or can they be made at the 300 megahertz band? So uh, this version of the HD link is from 930 to 960 only. Um, we, we are looking at uh, next generation of the product uh, that would potentially support that. But uh, at this point, it's only 930 to 960. OK. Um, Anonymous asks the question if we'll make this presentation available and uh, certainly online we'll put the recording out um, on YouTube and at gatesair.com uh, on our webinar section. Um, would it be OK to uh, to share a PDF of the slides on our site, Kayer and Tony? Uh, sure. OK, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. We'll, we'll get that um, posted here within the next 24 hours for everybody interested. Um, we also have a question from Steve Riggs. Um, well, an earlier. Uh, so, yeah, um, it's nice that friends uh, are able to connect on these things. Uh, will an earlier uh, IP link 100 be able to switch to a backup audio source like an HD receiver? Uh, yeah. Uh, if as long as uh, it's an IP link 100, you you know if you are looking to add additional features that may not have been available in the release that you first deployed it, you can always upgrade. And our upgrades, uh, we we don't charge for software upgrades, which is nice. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve, if you want, you can call me. We could talk about which uh, what versions of the firmware you have. And then, um, uh, and how to upgrade and give you the path for that, and make sure you have the right uh, uh, boot record and and the firmware for your particular unit. He'll probably appreciate that because he also asked a question about uh, wondering if if um, SendMail had been added to the feature set SMTP, um, and he was looking to see if he could get an email with status changes and some of those feature upgrades. So the way way you would. Uh... Uh, with the IP link where you would get email alerts on any of the alarm condition is to deploy live look with it. Uh, in the in the Ascend product, uh, we actually have the SMTP so, uh, you know, built in there, uh, but with, uh, that's why we created live look, which again, it's a non-intrusive product, real-time monitoring of, uh, of your content and your streams and your performance, uh, and you can get email alerts. You can set up soft, uh, soft thresholds too. For example, if you start seeing even 0.1% packet losses, which on a circuit that you should not see any packet losses, uh, you you can set up those thresholds to get an email alert. So it's a very powerful uh, tool that we developed within uh, Live Look. Uh, and then it's uh, you know, I mean, Tony can talk about the pricing, but it's uh, very reasonably priced for what for everything it does. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we have a question from Leandro from Argentina. It's supported dynamic public IP, oh, is supported, geez. Um, uh, I guess I'm not exactly sure which product, but I uh, was wondering if it's supported to have dynamic public IP over internet to connect two devices together. Uh, if, he's if he's asking to use DHCP on both units, um, no, I think we recommend that at least one end have a fixed IP address. Mm -hmm. um, and in that particular case, you know, if it's your sending unit uh, or, or if it's the receiving unit, that's fine because the send unit is just going to send information out no matter what IP address it's at and get to the receive unit. Um, if it's the other way around and we've got to go through multiple mats or punch our way through, uh, then we would use dynamic initiator on the receive unit to initiate, uh, basically to go offline, if you would, connect to the studio unit or the send unit build the circuit up and then start sending information. So mm -hmm. we would prefer that one of the two be on a fixed IP address. That makes sense. 
Yeah, so, uh, so another option uh, is that we are working also with a cloud provider uh, that uh, will be able to distribute, uh, you know, the streams uh, for encoders that are behind a uh, NAT or a, on a private IP address and decoders that are also uh, behind uh, private uh, in, in a private IP address. So if you if you need uh, to have more information on how to connect our in, our units uh, via a cloud service, uh, just uh, reach out uh, to to Tony and then it will will give you more information. Great. Uh, we have a question from Karan. Um, if I have a 44 one hertz sampling rate uh, using a Wheatstone network. Will IP link take the same sampling rate or will we have to set it? It's kind of a well he's if he's using Wheatnet, uh, Wheatnet and he wants to communicate to an IP can IP link um, will accept it. It's just that he's going to have to send it. It's going to be sent as an AS67 stream from Wheatnet into into the IPL. Mm -hmm. All right, Jim Peck asks, can the IP Link 200A support two simultaneous uncompressed feeds? The 200A? Yes. Well, both 200s, uh, all, yeah, both of them, uh, whether it's the 200 or the 200A, they both can do uncompressed linear audio on both channels. And, and, on, and if you would, all four channels, two channels out and two channels back, uh, mm -hmm. you know, your limitation now is really your bandwidth. Um, if you're doing uncompressed linear audio at 44.1, you're about 1.5, what, 1.5 and change. Uh, so you would need, you know, That's three meg, three meg in in uh, if you're doing dual linear. And that's before any FEC or anything. All right, um, we are at the top of the hour, but we have a couple more questions here. I think we can get to um, Omar Mr asked the question uh, in the MPXP, can I have two signals on the transmitter site, one AES and one MPX? Correct. Uh, yes. yes, the output of the uh, the 100 MP um, concurrently is, is going to be two analogs and one AES 192. So whether you're feeding the send unit uh, baseband analog or AES-192, the outputs on the receive unit will always be a main and a backup baseband and AES-192. Yeah, so let me uh, let me make a comment on the MPXP, quick comment on that. We, you know, we don't achieve bandwidth uh, reduction using any type of uh, compression, uh, you know, like some some other vendors uh, do. Uh, we, we take uh, an uncompressed feed uh, whether it's AES-192 or, 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 or analog, you know, if you want to transmit the entire uncompressed feed at 24 bits, uh, it takes about 5 megabits per second. So how do we achieve 1.64 megabits per second? We use, uh, you know, bandwidth uh, uh, resampling. Uh, so we only transport the audio and RES, for example, that gives us bandwidth reduction. Uh, we can reduce the number of uh, sample widths. Uh, so we go from 24 down all the way up to 12 bits, right? Uh, with uh, some kind of a rounding, a round, a rounding uh, to maintain uh, the quality of into the higher order bits. And then we use our very intelligent, uh, tightly packed, uh, you know, uh, packets that we send, which is this is the reason why we are able to achieve uh, the 1.64 megabits per second and still maintain a uh, stereo separation, the quality of the signal in, in, in the 50s. Right, and this again, this is important to understand, this is uncompressed. Um, you know, compared to there's uh, the other versions of, um, you know, there's the, the micro MPX uh, that's available through many devices. Uh, that's a compressed, that's a highly compressed audio, um, highly compressed ba uh, baseband. We're uncompressed. So that's, and 1.64 is, you know, again, that's enough to fit over our, our 950 system and some of the other legacy UDP 950 systems. You can just turn off their audio, enable their IP paths to be 100% bandwidth and feed the 100 MP across that, which we have customers too. All right. We do have a final question, uh, this one about ascent. Uh, how can I send uh, data um, RRDS for three different audios? It's probably a pretty broad question, but talk a little bit about, I guess, um, multi-signal um, capability of, of ascent? 
RDS data or yeah. audio data? Um, RD RDS was what they were specifically asking about. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure that the Ascent would be the right uh, platform for sending that. Um, you know, once we have the media connect capability, which can send any UDP stream, by the way, uh, it can it can send any UDP stream, whether it's high bit rate or low bit rate. It can work from something like 9.6, um, you know, RDS data that's coming to the ascent in an IP mode. So as long as the data comes to us uh, as a, as a UDP stream, we can take that using ascent media connect and then and then distribute it to uh, not just uh, three, but we can distribute it to literally 100. Uh, sites. Uh, okay, I guess so. My, you know, my my response to this would be, well, if he's using a scent, that means he has IP out at his transmitter site, um, which means whether it's UDP via 950 system or through public switched IP um, or private switched IP, then he doesn't need to send through a scent because sending an RDS uh, information from your automation system to the RDS encoder is going to be UDP anyway. So you'll be able to send it over that same pipe that you're using to transport the audio, you know, the, the same IP system that you're using. You would just point to the IP address that's on the far end and to the correct port. So uh, I don't, you don't really would need to. Yeah, except, except you, you, you're right, Tony, except if you want to get reliability. Uh, correct, for that, right. For that, then you would send it through Ascent and, and the Ascent media would provide that uh, reliability using IP, transport. Using the IPLs and sending it through IP Connect. Yeah. Okay, we um, are at the, we'll pass the top of the hour at this point. Um, we've had a great Q&A session here. I think um, there may be other questions always you know people are curious so if they were going to try to get in touch with you guys after this presentation what would be the best way care and tony so to contact tony uh you know for uh, the the questions technical questions uh and and he should be able to provide the answers yeah um you could reach me uh at tony.gervasi at gatesair.com um, I'm on social media. I'm usually on, on the broadcast group, so I get a lot of IMs on that. As and uh, my phone number, you can reach me at uh, five six one five ten zero five six zero. That's uh, my office in beautiful Florida. Uh, so um, and I'd be more than happy to walk you through any configurations, any setups, and kind of you know show you the 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 best way to achieve uh, what you're trying to uh, what you're trying to get done. Awesome. Um, I also want to bring up that we do sell um, uh, the Interplex products is we sell direct to our groups, but also we're available through a lot of box goods, whether it's uh, Geisler or BGS, BSW, SCMS, uh, Pippin up in Canada. Uh, um, GS Broadcast GS also. GS Broadcast. Um, uh, so we are available through all the box goods guys. Um, uh, so you can work with me directly. Uh, I can draw up a map or I can uh, do, give you a nice diagram like you saw today on the presentation and show you the parts you need. And then um, you can get them priced through your local distributor or we can price direct or a little bit of everything. Very full service and um, yeah, coming from a place of wisdom and experience. To, uh, it's it's very cool being part of these webinars because I, I learn a lot about the about, uh, just broadcasting in general, let alone our products, which is awesome. So I want to thank you guys for taking your time, you know, to talk about just how these solutions keep getting better and better. So um, thank you very much, guys. Um, I will point out again, as uh, you know, as I've said ad nauseum, this is part of the virtual events um, initiative that we've got to get you some great content by webinar. And please join us again on Thursday for those of you who uh, also our TV broadcasters. Uh, we have a very special virtual event called Flexible Low Power TV Transmission Systems, and our very own Martin Horsepool will return to talk about the unique demands of low power TV broadcasting and the equally unique and optimized variety of solutions that we have available to elevate your LP TV game. We did a lot of interesting things to grow the company last year. We're going to talk quite a bit about that, so we'd love to see you there. For more info about that webinar and many more, including uh, we'd love to see you here next Tuesday for our Interplex use cases uh, webinars Tony and Care uh, spoke about briefly. Uh, for more information about those, please visit gatesair.com slash V for virtual hyphen events 
and uh, you'll get an eye full of all the goodies we have in store for you over the next couple of months. If you have any ideas for future webinar topics, including course material for Gates Air University, please let us know at marketing at gatesair.com, or you can email me, Keith, uh, directly at kadams at gatesair.com. So thanks again, everybody, for attending this Gates Air Connect virtual event. And for care, Tony, uh, Steve, who uh, was here in spirit um, as an attendee, and all of us here at Gates Air, this is Keith Adams saying, stay safe, stay happy, and more than ever before, let's stay connected. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.